<coughs> we'll start with a lion. Oh gosh. Up you go. There we go. All right. Starting with the Alloyan Comics. Blood Barrier. Uh, this is the worst of the blood cards. Yes, it's a decent bit of armor, but it's always, or pretty much always going to be post combat. You're playing Alloyan, so you don't have any great in faction removal, so you're relying upon your off faction. Um, and self has never really been spectacular. So, I yeah. see this being a very low draft pick and not played yeah. at all in Constructed. I don't really like it. I don't, don't see it getting much play. Dark Seal Enforcer, on the other ah. hand, is the exact opposite. Bye. This is an amazing, amazing common card. Uh, Matrix Warden is widely regarded as one of the most, one of the best common cards out there. And this guy kind of puts Matrix Warden in shame. His rank one, if you have one Dark Forge on the board, is better than Matrix And rank two, pretty close. And rank three, yeah, okay, his base stats start to fall behind. But he's a robot, so he still gets all of the robot bonuses. Um, and with the new set having several robot items, it's significant. I see this guy as a very high draft pick. Uh, I think all that Dark Forge in general are going to be high draft picks. Uh, and he could show up in some Construct. I'm curious to see how Dark Forge is working Constructed in general. No. Um, no. I think it's really too early no. to have a good opinion on that. Oh, you took the color off? I'll put it on here in a minute. Um, but yeah, Dark Steel Enforcer, great draft card. Possibly constructed viable. His stats are sufficient that if you're getting a lot of value out of the uh, robot aspect of him, uh, the robot deck could certainly see a resurgence. So, on the face of it, any constructed deck has a maximum of six Dark Forge that you're going to be able to play. Because there are... Every faction has a heroic, <coughs> rare, and common Dark Forge. So any two factions have six possible Dark Forge. I fairly fir firmly believe that none of the rare Dark Forges are constructed viable. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute, but I think there's a deck there. It's probably yeah, it's either a Loyan Utera or Utera Tempest. Um, the Necrium Dark Forge is yeah. The Necrium Common Dark Forge is. Kind of underwhelming. Let's see if I can find it. This thing, I, if it's for minus minus, it'd be Necri Matera. I am so, so glad this is not minus minus. It gives something other than Necri Matera a shot to show up and have a seat at the table. Um, from my experiences in this draft that I'm going on right now, the Terra Dark Forge really, really helps the Dark Forge in general. Uh, Flow Steel Carrier, another robot, uh, gives other robots armor and a decent amount of armor at that. Uh, chop block with him or give it an easy trade. I don't know that he's constructed rival. Uh, there are just better robots all around. If you're putting this guy to construct a deck, it's because you don't have better robots. That having been said, in draft, there are enough robots that you can get, but this guy is actually a really nice draft pick. Five attack is enough to clean up, or in some cases even trade with, other creatures. He fa fails the rule of six by one at every level. And getting a... 
Talitha. Calm down. Kimmy Kitty. Kimmy Kitty. Failing the rule of six at every level is a little underwhelming, but it's not by enough to be a major downside given that when it gets blown up, one of your other robots gets enough armor. And there are plenty of robots for draft. So, good draft card, not a great constructed. Vault Intruder. A, it's a robot. B, it's one of the very few Alloyan creatures that has better than rule of six progression at 7, 12, and 18. Uh, this guy is just spectacular. Gives you information for your second play on the turn. Um, if you're running Necrium, you can check and see if you want to play a Vault or a Thunder Imp. If you're running Uterra, you can check and see if you want to play an Aetherphage. Or just get information about what he has. If you look at his hand, you see he has a uh, Battletech. You can block out the middle. Plenty, plenty of options. And information from the stats. <coughs> the stats of the card information seems to be underwhelming. Talitha, please be calm. You're hurting my viewers' ears, Talitha. Mind break. Um, sorry, Mind Breaker. It's another meta mind. It's decent. It's on turn card draw rather than delayed card draw, which sometimes is nice, but you've got to have a board state for it to be particularly effective. Uh, if you don't have the board state, it's worse than a meta mind adept at later levels. I think any deck that's looking to draw cards is better served with a MetaMind Adept or delayed card draw. So I unfortunately don't see this guy getting a lot of play. His stats are also kind of lackluster. Yeah, and I don't see any, any draft play. You don't have enough MetaMinds in draft. And his stats aren't draft worthy. And I don't see any constructive play because, well, bad stats and you have to be able to maintain a board state, which is sometimes difficult to do in constructed. Pummel Pack, uh, given the amount of single target removal in this game that is effective against everything at this point, uh, trying to do a, there can only be one creature, until you have some way of making it not targetable during your opponent's turn, I just don't see it. In draft, this has a small niche. I don't think it's enough of a niche to make it worthwhile now. Maybe if it gave mobility as well. Shadow Mist Angel, this is the first of the rare Dark Forges. Every rare Dark Forge has the ability, whenever another Dark Forge comes into play, that this creature gets plus one, plus one, two, two, three, three. Uh, yeah, there always seems to be one new meta mine that nobody wants to play. This guy is interesting. If he were a robot, he would be amazing. He'd also probably be kind of broken. Um, if you look at the rare ones, the best rare Dark Forges are in Necrium and Tempest because they have uh, the Necrium one is a zombie and the Tempest one is a Yeti. The Tempest one also has mobility, so they can slot in with some synergies with Yetis and zombies. There is no angel synergy as of yet, so the fact that it is an angel is irrelevant. That having been said, a little bit of armor goes a long way, particularly when it's a growing creature. Unfortunately, it doesn't really grow fast enough, and its health is low enough that it doesn't have the survivability needed for what it wants to do. It's a nice card. It'll be a good draft card. I don't think it's going to show up in any constructed house. Forgewatch Sentry. Um, in take three of the high attack, easy to kill with damage creatures, the high attack, high armor, low health cycle. This is an interesting one. It solves the Necrium problem, but it's not buffable. Um, <coughs> if you buff it, you're just asking for your buff to be thrown away. 
One of the nice things about, say, Orion Battle Droid is dropping listening shard on it. It gets out of the range of the Necrium issue with the minus minus. And at the same time, it's very hard to deal with damage. This guy gets away from the Necrium problem, but dies to anything that can hit it for one. It's a nice card. It'll be a pain to deal with in draft. But ultimately, I don't see it getting much play in Constructed. Relic. Hermes! Where did you find that? You found a Pez dispenser. I didn't even know I had a Pez dispenser. Yes! I don't know if these are still good. You want to try one, Flyfoot? Yeah, let's not get you into the habit of picking up uh, random pill-like things that you see. You get one, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Ah, crap! I just turned off my monitor. Mommy. There we go. So, Hermes turns every creature into a bright steel gargoyle except for himself. Um, if you found Stasis Warden decks annoying before, this one will make it far, far worse. Now you don't have to necessarily be able to have enough spells to activate Stasis Warden yes. on your own creatures. You just drop Hermes, and then you just have to Stasis Warden your opponent's creatures, and one of yours. And plus, it gives all of your creatures arm, which is nice. Um, the Nexus, whatcha who's it? Nexus Technician? Yeah. They gave everything armor that was in the middle of the lane. was a decent draft pick uh, because of the armor. I think this guy is a much better draft pick and we'll see play in draft and in Stasis Warden decks. And probably will slot into the robot decks. Shadowsmith. Um, this is the reason that I, I think know. AU will be the choice for the Dark Forge deck in Constructed. Um, the sheer amount of cards that you will level up with this guy and Splicer is kind of obscene. Put three of this guy, three Splicers, three of the uh, Dark Forge robots, and three of the uh, health-giving plants. Add in Let's say two Iron Maidens and three of the uh, rare Utera, the Breakthrough Dark Forge, and then sprinkle liberally with a few other leveling cards, and that seems like it could do quite well. I'm not sure it has enough removal, but no, oh, gosh, we will see. It's a deck that I plan to try at some point in the future. Alyssa Strikeborn, I don't know what to think about this card. Its starting stats are kind of pathetic, but with the amount of health that it has, it's kind of scary. Basically, unless you can kill it in a shot, well, it's non-battle damage, so... Uh, <coughs> any any non-battle damage, unless you can kill it in a shot, is useless. If you, say, burn out this thing, it gets plus eight, plus eight, which means it immediately heals back all the damage it was dealt. Um, it goes into a deck that has traditionally been Tempest Utero, where you're playing Brimstone Tyrant and things like that to activate Dozer or Thundersaur. I don't think this works out as well as it could if it were Uterra. I'm very glad it's not Uterra. It doesn't have breakthrough, so you can't treat it kind of like a Thundersaur. Ah, it has potential, it just... It doesn't quite make the mustard. If it were all damaged, it would be, well, broken, but... With it just being non-battle damage, you've got to bend over backwards to get it to go off, and then, yeah. 
there's potential, but not having breakthrough or mobility, it just gets chump blocked. And basically all you're doing is turning your direct damage spells into plus attack. Marty McGear. This guy I absolutely love. First of all, I absolutely love gnomes. Uh, I played World of Warcraft for something like eight years. My main character was a gnome. Uh, gnome mage. Engineer. Awesome, awesome. Gnomes are the greatest mythical creatures ever. Uh, and to have a, another legendary gnome is particularly a named legendary gnome. Unlike Iron Mind Acolyte, which didn't have a name. It's just a generic title. This guy is pretty cool. Uh, going through your deck, it would be nice if the Activate couldn't pull underleveled cards. Um, that's definitely going to be a problem with its higher level. It might have been broken if it was guaranteed to be the higher level card, but actually it would have been broken if it were guaranteed to be the higher level card. But in any event, um, I look forward to playing with this guy. Uh, he's going to do interesting things to the robot deck. As a side note that someone pointed out to me earlier, this guy also opens the door for a very interesting Forge Guardian deck. Uh, if you're, all your robots in your deck are Forge Guardians, activating him allows you to get three Forge Guardians into play in a turn. If you've got two Alphas and this guy sitting on the board, and you draw your... Sorry, if you... Yeah, if you've got two alphas on the board, activate him, get hopefully the one you don't have in your hand, and drop gamma and delta. So let's say you get activate him for beta, drop gamma and delta, voila, you have an omega in your deck. That's still at the fringe of fun play. Um, the Forge Guardian deck has never been constructed viable. This guy's not going to suddenly make it construct viable, I don't think. But it is an improvement to that deck. And that's all the Alloyan cards. About 